OK, let's return to our top story now. Clashes in the Venezuelan capital continue following Sunday's vote for a new constituent assembly. President Maduro branded the result a victory for the country, but with only a 41% voter turnout, the opposition said it would continue to protest the results. Controversy over the election has sparked a deadly wave of violence across the country. Well, let's debate this issue now. I'm joined by Francisco Dominguez. He's the head of the uh, Latin American Studies Research Group at Middlesex University in the UK, and also by Christian Manchera, lawyer and political activist and director of La Tribuna Online magazine. Welcome to you both, uh, gentlemen. I would like to come to you first, if I may, Christian. The violence that we've seen, I th believe it's 10 people have died. Who do you think is ultimately to blame for this violence? Well, we definitely have to blame the uh, government of Nicolás Maduro, who has gone ahead with this uh, constitutional uh, vote that occurred yesterday to write a new constitution. Uh, we all have to remember that about two years ago, uh, the parliament was elected. Uh, they won fair and square elections, and there's no reason to create this uh, turmoil in this country that already has a lot of unrest. Uh, and I think that what happened yesterday is a direct effect, uh, and what is going on in the streets today as well, of the the stubbornness of this president to understand that this is not the way to go, that the parliament was elected democratically and there's no need to write a new constitution because it makes no sense to keep that uh, mind in place. And Francisco, how would you respond to that? We've seen fatalities on both sides. We've seen a soldier killed. We've seen some teenagers killed. Who's, who's to blame here? Well, the people from the position have been saying pretty explicitly that what they want to do is to overthrow the government. Um, what's interesting and paradoxical about it is that the fact that they campaigned a bit more than a year ago about actually calling a constituent assembly. And they claim that the constituent assembly is in the constitution and they were right. Article 348 of the constitution makes it very explicit that the president can call a constituent assembly. And most of the uh, violence which we have seen is concentrated in a few places in the rich districts of Caracas and it is this masked gunman who had been around um, shooting stuff, uh, using guns, um, Molotov cocktails, and attacking everything. And the discussion is how many of the responsibility for the killing is theirs. I think most people in Venezuela actually will say that. And after all, a million voted for the Constituent Assembly, which is the majority. Christian, let's talk first of all about this then. Did the president have the right to in invoke this vote? Is it Article 347, I believe? This, this is the issue that, that was just being mentioned there by Francisco. Did the president have the right to do this or not? Well, I think uh, Francisco omits to uh, tell the public that, yes, uh, the president had the right to do so, but he had to consult uh, the population first. You cannot just initiate a constitutional plebiscite without letting people know whether they want it or not. This is happening all over the world. All constitutions uh, have this in their writings that establishes clearly that before you move ahead with a new constitution, you must consult the population for them to accept it or not. It, ha it has happened over the years. Now, uh, according to the president, uh, he didn't need to do this because apparently the population had said to him that, you know, he can go ahead and, re and write a new constitution. And I also disagree with the fact that uh, the deaths and the people who have been uh, protesting on the street, that this is a shared responsibility. It is very clear that Venezuela is a democracy. And if, in fact, it is a democracy like we all thought it was, then uh, Nicolas Maduro should have stuck to the constitution that the country already has and allowed out for a referendum on his government and go to a square elections to see if really the people want him in power. But what he's doing now is replacing the fairly elected uh, parliament and now having new members come in to destroy democracy and to destroy institutions. So that is not what I call democracy. And the full responsibility of what happens herein is going to be on the government and not on the opposition who has tried to fight democratically and not with weapons or guns on the street. And these people are being massacred miserably on the street by the uh, official government. Francisco, what do you if make I of that respond. accusation that, that uh, Maduro's trampling over democracy? And, and it's, it's a claim that's supported by uh, Nikki Haley, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N. She said that this is a sham election heading towards dictatorship. The section on the Constitutional Assembly, on in the, the section in the Constitution about the Constitutional Assembly is very clear. 
Article 347, your views are entitled to this. Article 348, 349, and 350, and none of them stipulates or says nowhere in that constitution overall that there is a need for the consultation before the constitutional assembly. In fact, 15% of the registered But it is obvious that you have to consult the population. Actually, it doesn't make any sense. You know, it doesn't make any sense. You must 15, let people participate 15, in the electoral process. You just can't destroy a constitution 15, because you don't, you're not happy with it. How can you call that democracy? 15, it doesn't make any sense. If you have a democracy, which, 15, by the way, the last listen, constitution was written by Mr. Chavez and his goons, I don't I understand know, why now they I have know, to rewrite a new one. I, I, I am I'm strongly against your, your, your claim. I know you're frightened of what I'm saying, but do, do not be. Listen to the argument first. I listen to you very respectfully. I, I, I demand the same. This, there is no absolutely any single article within the Constitution that says that you have to call a, a referendum, consulting referendum before calling a constitutional assembly. 15% of the electors actually can call a, 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 a constitutional assembly as well. And what is interesting about the result yesterday, the 8 millions, is the fact that the opposition claims to have 80 to 90 percent of the population support and here you have you know that this is not the case at all in fact if you were to look at the place beside the opposition organized on the 16th of july they claim to have got seven million votes by that measure the government actually got eight million so therefore they are a minority and the government is the majority what the woman wants to do with this and they made it very clear maduro said it again and again and again what it wants is to stop the violence and bring the opposition to a dialogue so that actually peacefully... But why would you need a new constitution about. to stop the violence? Can you answer that question? Why do you need a new constitution to stop the violence? It doesn't make any sense. The if reason, you really the want reason, to stop the violence, then you should answer the needs of your people. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, we're talking about constitutional law, and constitutional law requires the, the primary constituents, which is the people, to write the constitution and for call for those elections. It is clear that in Venezuela there is not a majority of the people who want this new constitution. And we also know by constitutional law that there has to be that majority claiming and asking for the new constitution. You cannot just unilaterally as a president tell your people, okay, well, I don't like the new the, the current constitution. I'm going to write a new one so that I can decide who stays in power. I can decide who I appoint to the uh, high courts. And I could also decide what goes on in Congress. That is not a democracy. If you want to call this, Professor, uh, which I, I would be surprised if you want to call this democracy, because it is not a democracy and you cannot interpret that those articles of the constitution. It is clear that when you go to a constitutional plebiscite or uh, election, you have to have the majority of the people calling for it. You cannot just unilaterally say, well, I don't like it. I'm going to write a new uh, one. Mr. Moderator, I, what, I want you to stop in yeah, so that I can reply. That's a fair point. Francisco's uh, making a fair um, point. A Christian, if you could just give Francisco a, a chance to respond to, to the points you've made there. And I hope that I'm not interrupted again. The basic position is it can be called, I it is not. constitutional, <laughs> And there is no reason for, for anybody not to call it. And the reason why Maduro has called for this constitution assembly, constitution assembly is in order to empower the population and to get a mandate, so that through man that mandate they can actually begin negotiations. The position of the government now has been strengthened regarding this dialogue that the government is, is seeking. In 2015, when the National Assembly elections took place, the government got 5.6 million. Um, now they got 8 million, so they increased by 2.5 million votes compared to 2015. Therefore, and he is insistent, it even has somebody like pres former President of Spain, Zapatero, actually, revealing two days ago that there have been conversations within the opposition, sections of the opposition at the government, and it seems to me that there is one section of the opposition that is totally recalcitrant, and there is another one that is prepared to talk. These 8 million votes actually facilitate the possibility of bringing about peace, which is through the dialogue which Maduro has offered again and again and again. Christian, I want to bring to you now the point about who is on the list. It seems to me that one of the issues, one of the major ones, is just exactly uh, who will be elected now? The accusation that the president has pretty much chosen the people he wants to be in the assembly by putting them on the list. Was the opposition represented here or not? 
Well, we saw that the opposition uh, did not want to participate uh, in the elections. They decided to go ahead about 15 days ago and have their own uh, plebiscite uh, uh, consultation to the, to the mass population in order to get an answer as to whether they want it or not, uh, this uh, constitutional uh, calling by the president. So, I mean, what I, what I don't understand from your guest is the idea that uh, how would that new constitution resolve the issues in Venezuela. It doesn't make any sense. The same speech was given about 10 years ago by Hugo Chavez when he said that they needed a new constitution. Apparently, that new constitution that was written uh, and is the current one written by Chavez and his uh, friends, associates, it called for uh, the need to solve many social problems that they had at the time. Did they solve the problems? Clearly, they did not. And the issue is not about the Constitution. The issue is not about the law. The issue is about the leadership in the government at this point and how the opposition can relate to this government. So in reality, when you have the country divided, when the people do not approve of the current, current government, even uh, prior uh, uh, Chavistas have said that, manifested that they are not happy. So why just don't go to a general election? Election. Submit your name, submit your 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 work in your in your government, and let the people decide if you want to stay or if you if you if you, if you go. But don't uh, re rewrite the constitution and say that that's going to be a way of, of solving the the, the mass uh, unemployment rate, the inflation rate, the economy going into shambles, and also uh, having people standing in lines uh, uh, asking for food. That is completely ridiculous. That a law will fix that. Only true leadership will fix that, and that is not the way to do it. And I, I don't know what type of constitution they're going. To write. All I know is that it's probably already written, already ready to destroy the opposition, which, by the way, has made a terrible job at, uh, you know, uh, doing what they have yeah. to do, which if is, may uh, you know, um, get democracy back in Venezuela. But that's a different story. Yeah, let's bring Francisco in. Go ahead. You respond. Well, I don't think anybody has ever said that the, the new constituent assembly is going to resolve all the problems. It's not going to. But the idea is that it will create a framework by you which... You just said it, that it's going to resolve the it. The recalcitrant and searches of the opposition can bring round to the dialogue that actually people want. If you were to compare the election yesterday, th eight millions, totally auditable, because all the information, all the data, everything is there. The plebiscites actually claim to have seven million votes. But how could they be uh, audible they burn, if you have an election by yourself? They burn, excuse me, they burn all the electoral material, there is no way to confirm that actually these were 7 million. But even in, on that actually account, they are a minority in that sense. And it seems to me that this has created a framework. Sections of the position already said that they want to have a talk. And the complication here is this. The United States has taken an extremely aggressive stance against the government of Venezuela. And this is encouraged by the opposition and the government of the United States encouraged, encouraged the opposition to continue with the recalcitrant attitude on violence. And this is part of the problem. Who said that the United States is entitled to actually tell Venezuelans who to elect, how to elect them, when to elect them, and quite, what kind of institutions to establish? Otherwise, the United well, States... Well, Cuba is telling Venezuela what to do. I don't see why is, the United States cannot this, do it too. This is, this is completely unacceptable in the 21st century. We thought that those those things actually are gone, but obviously they are not. And the opposition are openly and deliberately asking people like Marco Rubio, people like Donald Trump, to actually intervene in the affairs of Venezuela. It's up to the Venezuelans to decide. And the Constitutional Assembly exactly contribute. It doesn't resolve all the problems. Contribute to that framework without any question at all. Francisco, I just want to pick up on what you said. Do you have any fears that U.S. interference will actually be, will grow given what has now happened? Well, we have to wait and see. Whenever the United States intervene into the internal affairs of any country, all it does is creates anti-American feelings and supports whoever is on the receiving end. And in this case, Maduro is going to benefit out of this. The opposition has never been able to dislodge themselves from these pro-American, pro-U.S. imperialism, as people call it, stance. And they have, you know, been openly calling for this. And I think the more the United States intervene, the more uh, Maduro is going to be supported. The best thing would be for the United States to lay hands off Venezuela and allow Venezuelans to decide by themselves. And the only way Venezuelans can decide by themselves is instead of organizing
the overthrow of the government, which is explicitly called by the position, organizing violence, burning things, even people in the streets, is to actually come to the table of dialogue and then try to address the problems you know, of the nation which requires. And this is exactly what Maduro is saying. And the opposition, instead of accepting this, they are saying that they're going to go for more violence and they're going to go for more United States. This is completely unacceptable. Let's get your response to that, Christian. Should the US be uh, getting involved, what some people are calling interfering? Will that help or not? Well, of course, the U.S. has to interfere because, in a way, this crisis is also affecting the U.S. and not only the U.S., but the whole hemisphere when you have millions and thousands of Venezuelans leaving their country. Not only that, creating a big economic issue in the region. So it's not only about Venezuela, it's about the whole region that affects the stability of the whole hemisphere. So I disagree with the other guests. And also, I mean, Cuban has been dictating uh, Venezuelan policy for years already. So what's the big deal that the U.S. will intervene to save democracy when Cuba has been intervening to destroy democracy in Venezuela? So let's let's tell the people the reality of the issues here. And I think that it's, I don't think the opposition has been calling for violence on the street. The total opposite of the, the opposition has been very, very reluctant to go ahead and try to remove Maduro by force. They have been calling all the time for the past, I would say, seven years. They have been fighting even more, fighting to get uh, the Chavismo out of the government by democracy, not by, by uh, violence. And we have seen all of these uh, militia uh, who are funded uh, by the government killing people in the street uh, when these people are only protesting with flags, with, uh, I don't know, with their own uh, bodies, and we see it on an everyday basis. The facts speak for themselves. Uh, we need to recover uh, democracy in, in Venezuela, and it's not by writing a new constitution that will destroy the institutions that still keep Venezuela as a very uh, weak democracy, but they still keep it in place. So the idea that this constitution will solve Venezuela's problems is far from being the truth, and is very far-fetched. So I think that hopefully uh, we can get, you know, some dialogue going on, but it has to be a dialogue that is based on the truth, honesty, and the initiative to resolve the crisis in Venezuela, and not how it has been done for the past years by the government, by manipulating, lying, and destroying the opposition, which is something that they have done very effectively. Yeah, and sadly, more well. protests are expected uh, coming up today. Many thanks to you both guys. I'm afraid we'll have to call it a day for now. Christy Manchera, who we heard speaking there, lawyer and political activist, director of La Tribuna online magazine, and also Francisco Dominguez, head of Latin American Studies Research Group at Middlesex University in the UK. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for both of you coming on RT. Thank, Thank you. you. And you can